Why is it that on the screen, the Chinese is always the villain? And so crude a villain. Murderous, treacherous, a snake in the grass. The world knows me as Anna May Wong, but I have never forgotten my real name, Wong Lao Sheng, Frosted Yellow Willow. Very cool, I always thought. I grew up on Figueroa Street, not far from Hollywood, where my dad ran the Sam Key Laundry and the white kids called me Chink. I started working in Hollywood films when I was nine, behind my father's back. My first leading role came at 17, in a Metro two-strip Technicolor movie called The Toll of the Sea. It was a Madam Butterfly type role, the first of many such I would play. At 19, I played alongside Douglas Fairbanks in The Thief of Baghdad, which was a big hit and brought me to stardom. My role was a Mongol slave, a sly dragon lady type. So the pattern emerged very early for me. Butterfly or dragon, victim or vamp. Maybe you thought that soon I would be starring in all sorts of major studio films. But anti-messagination laws prevented me from kissing any white actor on screen even if he was in yellow face. Kiss a guy in yellow face? Have you seen the makeup on these guys? Warner Oland as Charlie Chang, Boris Koloff as Fu Manchu, even Quinn, Brando, and Katherine Hepburn did it. Though I must say, John Wayne as Genghis Khan <laughs> had to take the cake. So all I could play were roles with no kissing, or roles where the leading man was Asian. How many do you think there were? I was stuck with butterflies and dragon ladies. When I lost a decent role as the lead in the picture The Sun Daughter to Helen Hayes in Yellow Face, MGM called me two Chinese to play a Chinese. What the hell does that mean? But what really hurt was when I lost the lead in The Good Earth to Louise Rayner, who won an Oscar that could have been mine. What is casting discrimination in Hollywood? Just another day on the job. It was too painful to keep reinforcing false racial images. So in 1928, I went to Europe, where I found success in roles much more to my liking. Strangely, though, the Germans considered me Chinese and never mentioned that I was American. In 1936, I spent a year in China and felt in touch with something very ancient in me. I wonder how the idea got abroad that the Chinese are always without emotion. The passionate greeting I received from my own people touched me more than anything in my motion picture career. In China, I was both adored and criticized for the roles I portrayed in Hollywood films. I felt a simultaneous sense of belonging and alienation. How ironic to be rejected by the Chinese because I'm too American, and by Americans because they prefer other races to play the Chinese roles. As a child on Figueroa Street, I had a dream one night of a wonderful, amazing sun city shining with golden light, where white palaces were erected with odorless gardens. I wander to white paths and dance and am overjoyed and throw blissful looks in the blue air. And a man with a big horn shouts, Anna Mae Wong. We do a close-up of that. 
And then another man comes near with a three-legged peep show box and whines and whines. And I have an overjoyed face because I feel the great happiness. And the man says, You did a great job, Anime Wong. You are a film star.